inheritance tax is just just there. You know, at the okay. levels it is, and and you can get what they call the uh, residential nil rate band, which is everyone's entitled to three hundred twenty five thousand in the in the UK. Tax, what, you pay no ta- you pay no yeah, tax on that. Yeah, and there's no tax between spouses. Does so. that count? Into, does that take into account everything? So, uh, for example, like gold rings, you know. Yeah, you know, if they got art, I don't yeah. know, and and things yeah. like that in the house, does it? Do they? Does someone? Does someone come in and check all that? It needs to be valued, you know, and so it's declared to HMRC, and uh, and they can work out what that tax due is on it. Okay. We we do it as professionals anyway, but we can ask that for their input, uh, and then uh, if you're if you're a couple and you've got wills in place, and uh, you want to maximise your your, your tax free allowance. Uh, everyone's entitled as a couple to a million pounds now. Not not a lot of people know that. So you get three hundred twenty five thousand each, and then if you're passing your house on to you know your next what they call lineal descendants, so children and grandchildren that sort of thing, then the uh, the government and HMRC have said you can have an extra hundred and seventy five thousand each. So all of a sudden you've gone from three two five as an individual, double that up because you're a couple, and then you get your so you're at six fifty. And then you get your 175,000 each on the death of the second of you, uh, takes up to a million pounds. So if you've got an estate worth a million pounds in the UK, you don't pay any tax. You shouldn't pay any tax. And if you do, uh, what's going on there? You know what? Is this something? Uh, you know, again, I've coming no, I, left I, I didn't know that either. Did you? I've never heard of that either. No. And when you try, when you say couple, is, you, is that married couples? Yeah, or civil partnership. Yeah, right. Okay. So. What's a civil partnership? Uh, same sex. And, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, there's but also, still married. Yeah. There's yeah. also the other sort of relationship as well, now, isn't there? Where it's not it's not a formal marriage. I think a couple took it to court a, a year or so. Well, I think ago. you've got the co-parent or not co-parenting. Is that separation? But it's co-inhabiting. Is that? Is that the same sort of thing now? No, there's got to be some formal connection. Right, okay. you know, and, uh, I think that's where people get a bit lost sometimes because I've heard that before. Like, oh, if you cohabit with someone for seven years or something like that, then you're entitled to X amount. But I, I think that's all a bit of a myth. Seven years is always thrown around, you know. You, yeah, you that's know, what I mean. You hear it. Anyone, like, yeah, they, they'll talk about seven years. So seven years really is if you've got a gift in your estate or you've got an asset in your estate today, if you give it away and you, you take no further benefit from it. So let's say let's say £100,000 in a savings account and you decide to give that away to, to a third party, you know, nephews, nieces, cousins, whatever. Uh, you've got to survive seven years before that becomes outside of your estate and it's tax free. That's that's the scenario. So that's what the seven years is about. What's the what's the tax price on that? You know, so if it's a say, like, what's the what's the percentage of tax you'd pay? It, it's forty percent like? inheritance tax. Is so, it? So again, these are sort of in isolation things we're talking 40%, about. Forty percent. So you're yeah, paying yeah. super tax on it. It's, it's you know. But but you've got to look at the, there's other strategies to try and mitigate tax, you know, yeah. because there's there's all sorts of things you can do. I mean, we use financial advisors to do some of the tax planning on things like the AIM market. So you can have an asset and, and if it uh, passes through your financial advisor and it's the right thing to put it on the AIM market because it's more volatile than the FTSE, uh, within two years, those assets become tax free. Now, if you're... You know, it sounds awful, but if you're late in the day, as it were, you, you know, you're very mature and getting on in years and you may not think you've got seven years, why wouldn't you look at that as a strategy? Mm-hmm. Now, we don't advise on that. We say you need to take appropriate financial advice and here's the person to, to help you in that in that respect. But it's a, it's a known strategy to use, you know. And what's the AIM market, sorry, Trev? AIM is the alternative investment market. So it's like a secondary market to the, to the footsies, you know, so... Uh, it, it's a great tool, and there's many firms that offer those investment vehicles. But like I said they're they're more. Is, risky. It, is it a is it a low risk or a high risk? You say? I, I think it's it's a higher risk overall. Okay. But, but you know, from what I understand, it's not it's not about trying to make money on those markets. It's about trying to mitigate the the, 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 tax. the tax liability. Yeah. So some people look at that, you know. Mm. But again, a good IFA will deal with that, and uh, that's good, that's we good. just know of it, and we know it's a tool. But because we're not licensed as financial advisors, we would pass that to uh, to them to, yeah. to deal with. Okay. Uh, and just just to clarify a point you made a second ago. So if if I'm alive and I give a uh, hundred grand to my son, for example, mm. I need to live for seven years so he doesn't do. get so he doesn't pay inheritance tax. Is that right? That's correct. Right. Yeah. I got you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's just, let's, on a bit. let's let's also draw this up because when you talk to clients, they rightly or wrongly assume that that uh, that seven years it goes down by a seventh every year. So if you if you ended up dying in year three, 
and you've given that money away, lots of clients think, well, that's three sevenths of tax that I've saved on the 40%. Well, the, the, the tax sort of uh, uh, charge doesn't start until year four. So what they're trying to stop there is people at the last minute trying to, trying to give things away. So, so it then reduces over the last four years. So from year four to seven, that's when you get the savings on tax. So if you died in year two, there is no tax savings, even though it's been outside of your estate for two years, you know, as it's a gift. It's a high amount of tax, isn't it? Four oh, percent. it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge, like I thought maybe like 25%. You know? Yeah, no, yeah, I think it was around there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know it's 40%. I think the other thing to think about as well is, you know, uh, you've worked long and hard for this. And, and clients, rightly so, want to retain as much as they can. Most people don't mind paying tax overall. The people that we meet, they feel it's it's the right thing to do as a, you know, as a citizen. And we all do it, don't we? Yeah, but you've already paid it on what you earned in the first place. Yeah, You're paying yeah it I, know, I know, There is that debate. It's... Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and pensioners feel like that as well yeah. because they, you know, they've they've saved up most of their lives to put towards a pension, and then they're retired, and obviously their income is reduced generally, you know, from their their working days, and then they're taxed on that, and and it's it it does seem harsh, mm-hmm. but it's it's the law, isn't it? You know, it's not not a lot we can do about that. 